Welcome to Words of Torah. I'm Rabbi Johanna Hershenson. This week, we are studying the beginning of the book of Exodus. The portion is called Shemot. It means uh, names, and in fact, the uh, book of Exodus begins with a list of the names of the ancient Hebrews who went uh, into Egypt and remained there. And we learn uh, from rabbinic uh, commentary on the portion that, um, right, because being in Egypt sets the scene for redemption from slavery in Egypt, we learn in rabbinic uh, commentary that redemption is justified or warranted for the ancient Hebrews because of the fact that they kept their names, they kept their language, presumably Hebrew, and they uh, maintained um, their identity in a way that was possible even though the external conditions on them made it hard. And um, they did it with integrity, um, as honestly as possible while still surviving uh, the situation at hand. Uh, and yet, uh, in this portion, uh, everything in the story of these ancient Hebrews shifts uh, when we learn a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Now, it's uh, very easy to get that um, the new king in Egypt not knowing Joseph is a problem because, right, Joseph saved everybody in the years of famine and was important. And if the new king doesn't know Joseph, doesn't know the history of how these ancient Hebrews arrived in Egypt, uh, he may not treat them kindly or with the uh, mutual respect um, that the previous king uh, treated them. And the Rashi, uh, the commentary on uh, this idea, uh, you know, follows exactly what uh, we immediately assume from the narrative. Rashi says that um, maybe there really is a new king, um, or maybe it's the same king issuing new edicts. And uh, then Rashi um, suggests uh, that it's also possible that um, the same king comported himself as though he didn't know Joseph. At any rate, whether it's a new king or the same king who suddenly uh, doesn't know Joseph and then immediately views the ancient Hebrews as a threat, um, it really teaches us a lesson about the importance of um, not isolating ourselves uh, in our quest for continuity, uh, but maintaining a mutually respectful and useful uh, relations with um, our neighbors. I remember in rabbinical school, uh, Dr. Jacob Rader Marcus uh, taught us uh, in his way, and you have to understand, um, Dr. Marcus came to HUC in the 20s as a student. Uh, he then earned his PhD in Weimar, Germany, and came back to HUC in uh, the later 30s as a um, professor and was a professor of mine in the 1990s. So think about that. He, Dr. Marcus spent 70 years of his life uh, learning and teaching in Hebrew Union College. And uh, he uh, very profoundly uh, said to our class as we were um, finishing our five years uh, at HUC, uh, boys, don't wait until you're in trouble to reach out to your neighbors. And we talked about uh, the importance of uh, knowing the other uh, clergy wherever we served at synagogue. Uh, and he taught us um, that, you know, you have to build honest, genuine friendships and uh, you have to be there in your neighbor's time of need uh, to build up the kind of trust and uh, mutuality and relationship uh, that your neighbor should have your back in your time of need. And, um, you don't want to be in the position of, of, of a victim who reaches out uh, to your neighbors only when you need them. Um, you know, th there's no equality in that. There's no um, uh, tit for tat in the sense of building uh, trust 
a mutual foundation of trust. And, um, you know, all we have to do is study the rest of Exodus to find out the consequences of their arising a king who knew not Joseph. Good food for thought. Have a wonderful week, and I look forward to studying with you next week.